Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltyIsGaming.com here with a Sorcerer Tank build for you. This is a build that I use to duo Veteran Dread Cellar with Hack the Minotaur. In this video, I'm going to go through why Sorcerer Tanks are good, three different loadouts for gear, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and simple skills setup that can make it very easy to start out and progress as an in-game Sorcerer Tank. You're going to want to watch this video if you're looking for a different style of a tank, one that excels in self-survivability and sustain, and one that's very very, very simple, and that's the Sorcerer Tank. Let's get started. So why play the Sorcerer Tank? Sorcerer Tanks have one of the highest mitigations possible in the game with skills like Bound Aegis. What this does is slotting, it's going to give you minor resolve, which you can get some other sources, but if you activate it, it's going to increase your block mitigation by 40% for three seconds. Their duration is not very long, but if you actually time this when a huge heavy attack or cleave mechanic, it can save your life with one of the strongest and most sturdy tanks out there, and people sleep on this skill. You also have one of the strongest, if not the strongest, self-heals in the game with unstable clan fear. Combine that strong self-heal with Restraining Prison, which when activated grants you major vitality when hitting the target, the Sorcerer Tank can have insane survivability, and I can get about 30,000 self-heals. Not to mention the skills are incredibly simple, as you can double bar a couple skills for even more mitigation and less complication. The downside of the Sorcerers is this. They don't have the utility that a Dragon Knight or a Necromancer provides. But you can get pretty close with AoE immobilizations and a pull via the Fighter's Guild skill and some ultimates. In general, you'll have to look to outside skill lines the majority of your utility, but the Sork Tank can make it work. And let's talk about the skills next, how to use them, and why. So when it comes to skills, the first thing we need to talk about is the decision to use the weapon skill line. Commonly, people are going to use sword and shield on the front. The reason being is your stamina-based taunt is going to reduce armor significantly, and that's pierced armor, the first and fundamental piece of our build. When you use this, you're on taunt enemy, meaning it's going to target you. It's also going to provide two debuffs to one target, minor breach and major breach, reducing physical and spell resistance by 2,974 and 5,948 for 15 seconds. In PvE, mobs have around 18,200 resistances. The lower you get it, the more damage your group does overall. This thing almost gets to 10,000 by itself. It's incredible ability. It costs stamina, and it's a pretty low cost ability, and how I typically use it is primarily taunt my priority target. So, and you can set up your tank to have an AoE taunt with some uh, gear choices. I do not. What I typically do is find the number one most damage producing mob, and I taunt that priority number one. Next, I go to what is the second most priority target, meaning what can one shot my DPS or a healer if I don't taunt them right away? So I kind of scan the area and learn through muscle memory and the mechanics so, oh, this is the one-shot 2H character that can just do an uppercut and no matter what, delete one of my teammates. So that's kind of how you use the pierced armor, is not necessarily an AoE situation because it's only single target, but you have to prioritize what's the most important and impactful damage-producing character out there that I got to target right away. Next up is Silver Leash. It's another stamina ability. comes from the Fighter's Guild, and what this does is chains or pull in a target. So the trick with this ability is it's quite expensive in stamina. You're not going to be able to chains and everything or you're going to be out of gas and no longer be able to block with Silver Leash. So how I typically do this is when I'm closing the distance, I usually range taunt using the skill in my back bar, Inner Rage, which I'm going to cover a little bit later. I taunt the melee targets first. Why? Because the melee will come to me. They have to to do damage to me. The only thing that does not is the range enemies. If it's a mob or a boss where you can't change it, I'll basically walk on top of it, park everything on top of it. So you're always kind of thinking to yourself, is it range or is it melee? Now let's say it's ranged. That's what I actually chains in. I chains it, then do a pierced armor on the same bar. So you need to be cognizant and not blow through all of your stamina, chaining stuff in that will just come to you anyways once you range on it. This is going to save your stamina and increase your survivability. It's very simple to just sit there and fire off silver leash at 20 objects. You'll be out of stamina. You won't be able to block. And the next heavy attack that comes in, you'll die. Next ability up is restraining prison. I have this on the three key, just like my dragon knife, and actually kind of act something similar. 
What it's going to do is shoot out an 18 meter radius in front of you, and it's going to immobilize enemies if they're hit in front of you for six seconds. If no enemies are immobilized, it's going to restore magic, kind of like the Dragonite's Chains. Hitting the enemy grants you major vitality. Increase your healing received by 16% for two seconds plus one second per enemy hit up to a maximum of six enemies. You're basically going to cast this and then into your burst heal, which I'm going to cover a little bit later. But this is kind of like talons for a sorcerer tank, a way to control a bunch of mobs without having to taunt and prioritize every single one. With the added advantage of giving you major vitality for a few seconds, especially if you hit a bunch of them. The downside of it is it's not in a 360 radius so you have to aim it and actually prioritize who you're trying to hit and why it does have a high magic cost so this isn't something you're going to want to use on a single target mob unless you need the major vitality but just keep in mind this is your control on your front bar and it's a great ability especially when you lead into the next skill which we're going to cover and that is unstable clan fear you're going to have to double bar this this is a pet and when you double bar it it's going to do physical damage but that's really not why you're using it you can act Activate the skill again to heal yourself and your companion and it scales off of weapon damage and stamina I don't know why this heals so much, but I've gotten 30,000 heals off of popping this thing. And how I use it typically is casting my restraining prison on my front bar and then into a heal. That way I can take advantage of that major vitality and boom, get me 30,000 on a crit heal self with zero buffs provided by anybody else. Just make sure to double bar it and it keeps your bar very, very simple and provides insane self survivability. Last ability up is Heroic Slash on our front bar. This is a single target debuff to the enemy that's going to reduce their damage via minor maim and also give you minor heroism getting more ultimate more quickly. How I use this is kind of the same way that I use Pierced Armor. I don't want to use this on every single mob because I'll blow through all my stamina but I want to use Pierced Armor and Heroic Slash straight out the gate so I start generating ultimate and also I reduce the damage of the priority mob, the one that hits the hardest, typically a boss, a mini boss, or something that's just absolutely melting you. In the last 12 seconds, you're going to have to kind of piggyback with Pierced Armor and this ability kind of constantly to keep the debuffs going, reducing the armor and reducing the damage while in turn. And that leads us to the staple survivability skill I put on my front bar, and that's Reviving Barrier. You can put whatever on your front or back bar that you like. I like this since I'm on my sword and shield. It's kind of like an oh crap panic button. It's going to provide you and people around you a massive shield. The shield is also going to heal you and your group members over 15 seconds. The sorcerer in and of itself doesn't really have a oh crap panic button besides negate. Plus negate is not that mobile. The thing that I like about reviving barrier is you can use it preemptively before you jump into a big huge fight where you're going to take a lot of damage or reactively when you're taking a lot of damage and you just need a panic button. This is your go-to. Another skill that I flex in here sometimes is Spell Wall. This is the Sword and Shield Ultimate, and what it does is it basically gives you block for seven seconds. So when you're completely out of stamina, you don't know what to do, I usually cast Spell Wall. This will lead into what I go on my back bar. If I'm getting seven seconds of block and I don't have to use it, I can actually use a Dark Deal and exchange magic for stamina. It's kind of an infinite sustain loop that you can use as a new tank when you're struggling with sustain. Another thing with sustain that you need to be aware of is when you're receiving incoming heavy attacks. Typically, you'll see these sparkly lines above a mob that indicate, oh, there's a heavy attack coming. When you block that, dodge it or avoid it, you want to make sure that's your window of opportunity typically to fully charge a heavy attack back and get stamina back. Usually mobs do not do repeated fully charge heavy attacks which will one shot you as a tank if you're not blocking. So that's your window of opportunity to fully charge heavy attack and get your stamina back assuming the mechanics and things aren't hitting you as well. Now we're going to go to the back bar and we're going to use a frost staff. So the frost staff with the ancient knowledge passive is going to give us the same blocking damage reduction as sword and shield does. The advantage of a frost staff is a couple fold. One is you can use it as a two piece so the trait can be infused. If you use sword and shield you only get half of the trait. So a sword with the infused trait 
and the shield with the sturdy is going to be half as effective. So when you go on your back bar with an infused crusher enchant, that's going to give around 2,000 armor reduction, about 1,900 or so. Why that's relevant is what you can do is put infused crusher enchant along with elemental blockade, which will proc damage shield, immobilize shield enemies, and also proc that crusher enchant, reducing armor further. So you as a tank have right around 11,000 armor reduction if you have an infused crusher enchant enchant taking full advantage of that on your back bar elemental blockade running and with only 18,000 resistances on mobs you're doing a lot of damage you're adding a lot of value to your team because you're stripping armor so much and that's why you primarily see tanks use elemental blockade and a frost staff for this effect and that's why we're going to stick with it now that we've talked about elemental blockade we're going to have our unstable clan fear on this back bar so it doesn't turn on and off and then we have some flex options so the first ability up on my bar is usually my armor buff and i'm going to get that via the mages guild balance skill even though it's a pain to get a hold of the mages guild this is very useful because what it does is gives us magic back and the cost of health so we have an infinite sustain loop in getting permanent magic it's also going to provide our major resolve giving us increased physical and spell resistance for 25 seconds and you can cast this without a target so you actually Actually buff preemptively to jumping in a fight with balance and since we're on the topic of infinite magic sustain you need to be aware of an important passive in the destruction staff skill line that's going to determine how you block and what resource you primarily use on your back bars blocking the tri focus passive in this skill line while an eye staff is equipped blocking costs magic rather than stamina me personally I don't put points into this I actually I leave it blank and I prefer to use stamina instead of magic when blocking on my back bar just be aware of this you can do whatever you want and rely on balance to keep constantly getting magic back and perma blocking me personally i just like to stick with stamina i'll explain why in a second so balance gonna give us an infinite sustain loop we're gonna cast it preemptively to get our armor buffs up and maintain it as best we can next ability up is inner rage this is gonna be magic based range taunt and that's really why i use it it's on my back bar so as i close the distance i usually typically taunt left to right the priority target that i need to get a hold of the boss the mini boss and then the small ads as i close the distance that's when i bar swap in pierced armor even though the boss might be taunted i'm still we're gonna do a pierced armor to reduce the armor significantly so rely on inner range to range taunt everything especially melee so that they come to you and you don't have to use your stamina for silver leash some folks like the frost clinch ability from the destruction staff skill line with the frost staff equipped on our back bar because it does provide major main i have used that on various tank builds the reason i stopped using it is the range is only 15 meters and unless you're doing very specific trials or dungeons typically the range mobs are outside of that 15 meter range radius and you have to just kind of wheel over there do some dodges and it blows through your resources now the trick ability and that's the third one on my bar and that's dark deal bargain with darkness to restore health and stamina instantly in additional stamina over 20 seconds and it cost magicka so we already have a way to get infinite magicka balance with health now we have a way to get infinite stamina back with dark deal you have to know something about this ability as a tank it has a one second channel so if you pop this and a heavy attack comes in you will die if you do not block it so it's going to take some practice and some skill to be able to actually use this without dying that's why i have sword and shield alt on my front bar when i'm doing really really hard content i'm unfamiliar with so i can pop it and go to my back bar and for seven seconds i know i'm gonna have block so what do i do i just sit there and smash dark deal until i basically am full up on stamina and then i'll use balance once or twice to get up on magicka assuming my heals are coming in it's an infinite sustain loop and especially helpful for newer players and that leads us to our back bar ultimate aggressive warhorn the reason you use this it's going to increase max stats for your party and increase damage significantly specifically crit damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds via major force this is your staple in dungeons and trials in pve you can flex this out for something else if you like if you're doing some challenge like i was doing where i did sword and shield in the front and reviving barrier on the back typically in a dungeon you're going to save this along with your healer or a trial and pop it in succession so the buffs are constantly running to provide the most damage as possible 
And now let's talk about the rotation. So we've already talked about this quite a bit, but what you're gonna do is pre-buff. So the number one thing you need to make sure you're maintaining is your armor via balance. As you have balance, typically what I do is I close the distance, light attack weave into an elemental blockade. So if I light attack on my back bar, it's gonna proc infuse crusher enchant blockade is gonna get that uh, crusher enchant rock and rolling. Now I'm gonna start looking at who can I target range taunt with inner rage. Now I'm gonna bar swap. Once I bar swap, I'm gonna find the priority target, typically the boss, and hit pierced armor on it, uh, reducing its resistances, and then heroic slash, reducing the damage done. Now I'm gonna look, does every mob chained in? If not, I'm gonna use silver leash to bring them in. And then I'm gonna hit restraining prison when all the AOE mobs are in a small radius to clump, lock them into place, and we can delete them. And then the, the major buffs that you need to maintain basically is your armor buff on your back bar and your elemental blockade. If this is too complicated, your number one thing is not get caught on bar swapping and a heavy attack comes in and you get deleted. So either you could put something like balance on the front bar to make it even simpler and drop something and basically just have a one bar build. But you need to experiment and this works best for me. Next up, let's talk about the gear section. So a beginner gear loadout where you maybe just started the game, you've never even done veteran dungeon or something. This is what I would run. The number one five piece I would run is Grace of Gloom. And in fact, that's what I use sometimes at end game because it's so good for survivability. This is Overland or Somerset. So you can buy it from the traders. The five piece is when you take damage, you're gonna turn into a shadow for 10 seconds, healing you every two seconds based off your max health and gathering major evasion, reducing damage damage from area attacks by 20%. It does not have 100% upside, but it's gonna give you a lot of survivability, especially in AOE, mechanics on the ground, and some good healing. Next up is Ebon Armory. This is obtained in Crypto Hearts 1 or 2 dungeon. You don't have to do vet. You can just run the normal version, even solo it. It's basically a really good starter set for dungeons and trials because it's gonna increase your health along with everyone else in the group up to 12 people by 1,000 for 20 in 28 meters. This is your starter set that you're gonna replace later on with other trial set, but it's a great thing to get out the gate. Next up, if you don't have a monster helm, you've never even done a veteran dungeon, I go with Endurance. This is obtained in Imperial City and Dungeon Finders, and the two piece will be active on your weapons, just giving you a bunch of max health. That's useful because a lot of our abilities and our Grace of Gloom will scale off of max health, making you more survivable. The thing you're going to work towards replacing right away is that Endurance. You're going to look to replace that with some weapons of either Grace Gloom or something else and go for a monster helm. One that is really good for groups is Sentinel of Razakun, obtained in Veteran Darkshade Cavern 1. When you heal yourself or an ally, you summon the spider that's going to restore health and magic and stamina to you and the allies within 5 meters every 1 second for 8 seconds. It does have a longer cooldown, but it provides group sustain group utility, not just you. When I'm doing selfish and really hard things and I don't have a coordinated healer or I don't have any healer and I'm doing a dungeon, I go with Engine Guardian for Dark Shade Caverns too. This is only gonna provide me with resources, including healing. But typically if I'm not running with a healer, I don't know the healer, this is what I go with. Now you're gonna work towards replacing Ebon on the body with another set, Crimson Oath, from Dread Cellar Waking Flames DLC. What this is gonna do is when you cast an ability, major or minor debuff using basically anything, it's gonna send out a wave of energy, a big, huge red line that's gonna reduce armor by 3,541 for 15 seconds. So we're already reducing it by about 11,000. This is gonna add 3,500 for 15 seconds and it has a 12 second cooldown so you can keep 100% uptime on this. Another really good set to go with is Drake's Rush from Black Drake. Philip. This, while you bash, is going to generate ultimate major heroism for you and folks around you. The downside of this is only limited to four players, so it's a really good dungeon set, but not so good in trials, where Crimson Oath can work really well in trials, dungeons, anything, frankly. Next up, you're going to work towards replacing, and that's a back bar set, and can pretty much the staple that's very, very expensive, and that's Powerful Assault. What Powerful Assault is going to do is make you change one of your back bar skills. I would drop Dark Deal for Echoing Vigor. Echoing Vigor is an assault skill line, and what that's going to do is proc Powerful Assault, giving you and group members weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds, 307 at gold quality. So this is assuming you have a pocket healer that can throw you spears and orbs and sustain your stamina so you no longer need Dark Deal. This will give your group a massive amount of damage on the back bar, but it's very expensive and kind of a pain to get a hold of. If you don't have access to this or don't want to swap out the skills, go with Torg's Pack, a craftable set. 
This is going to decrease weapon enchantment cooldown by 33%, increase non-oblivion damage weapon enchant potency by 45%. Essentially, you're going to get more out of that infused crusher enchant and keep a little bit more uptime on it. So it's going to debuff the armor even further. And it's a really good starter set and still what I use on PCEU because powerful assault is such a pain to get a hold of. Now, if you have this set up with the five on the back bar, five on the body, that leaves two on the front to use. And I go with Perfected Puncturing Remedy from Dragon Star Arena. It's going to add healing taken while you're on your front bar. And when you hit puncture, your taunt, you're going to heal yourself and gain physical and spell resistance equal to the amount of healing done for five seconds. The amount of healing scales off your max health. So I'm around 50,000 on this character. So when I hit that puncture, it's going to heal like an absolute max truck. The other set that you can go with is Void Bash, and that's from Vatishram Hollow's two-piece sword and shield. What that's going to do is you're going to replace your heroic slash ability with something like Power Bash. When you hit it, it's going to basically pull everything in in a 12 meter radius. The reason I don't like that set, and I've experimented with it, almost every mob that I need chained in is extended beyond 12 meters. So when I hit it, all I'm really doing is pulling in a bunch of melee mobs, and I found it almost zero useful. But those are some good options. Now the end game option and typically what main tanks use in Dungeons and Trials. The Monster Helm is going to be in Kratos Behemoth, Black Drake Villa, and Flame Attacks proc the increased fire damage. So increase fire damage and reduce flame damage. And basically end game PvE, a lot of people are playing magic. So this is going to ramp up your damage for you and your group. And that's why on the weapon, we're going to use the charge trait with the fire enchant. So when we're doing pierced armor, light attack, weaving, or other abilities, we're going to keep that in Kratos Behemoth proc. And then perfected Yolokrins, this is a chain of veteran Sunspire. This five piece here, when you taunt, is going to give minor courage to everybody. Weapon damage and spell damage by 215, and you can maintain 100% uptime. So typically the healers are going to get major courage for your group and the tanks are going to get minor courage. And that's what this is for. You also pretty much stick with powerful assault on the back bar, or you can even go with crimson oath on the back bar without powerful assault and your balance will proc this doing AOE reduction in armor. Very, very useful. And then the front bar setup is simply what we already have. Perfected Punctured Remedy with the Taunt and Massive Healing. Let's look at some gear charts and go through this. Beginner gear chart, what I would do is don't worry about the trait and the glyphs. You're not going to be using this gear for very long. So what you're going to do is go all seven heavy to level up that skill line. Go with 30 if you can find it, reinforce in the chest, but don't fuss with it and gold out the gear or gold out the glyphs. Just get it something started. You want just the five piece. And then your glyphs on the jewelry reduce block house one and then magic recovery is what I do the best. And then again, don't worry about the sword and the shield and all that. It'll come. Next up is the intermediate setup. And pretty much I use this a lot of time in the hardcore dungeon. So I do gold out a lot of this stuff and I do get the right traits. So the, the traits that I found best is reinforce in the chest. This is going to give you the most armor. And with that trait, you're going to get the most armor possible in that specific spot. And everything else sturdy, reducing the stamina cost while blocking. Then I go with prismatic, not in every single thing, but I go with my head, chest, and legs, giving me the most bang for my buck, health with the rest. I like 5-1-1 setup here. So five heavy, one medium, one light. With the undaunted passive, that's going to give me a big max stat pool. Not only health, but stamina magical, which I'm going to need. Then on the weapon, since I'm not using Kratos Behemoth, I go with Decisive to get some ultimate regeneration and weakening to lower the damage of the mobs that I'm taunting. Back bar, I'm going to go with the Infuse Crusher Enchant. Very, very important. You can go with all magic recovery or two magic recovery and reduce block cost. Play around with it. That's what I like. And on the end game setup, it's kind of more of the same. 5-1-1 setup, sturdy traits with one reinforced, prismatic, you know the rest. The major thing here is going all magic recovery and then flame charge trait. So you're going to be able to proc that flame, that damage, that dot for four seconds that will proc in Kratos Behemoth more frequently. So make sure that's pretty much the only change and running a trial set on the body at all times. Okay, let's talk about the champion points. And what I go with in the Warfare Tree is the Duelist Rebuff, reducing damage taken by single target. Ironclad, reducing direct damage. Unassailable, reducing damage of area effect. And Undurring Resolve, reducing damage over time. Very simple. You just want to reduce damage in the blue. Red Tree, I go with uh, Bracing Anchor to reduce damage while blocking. 
I go with Max Health Boundless Vitality Slippery Passive. Slippery Passive is going to give you a free break for every 21 seconds. The break free and have it be automatic is going to be useful if you're actually not that good at breaking free. And it's also just going to save you a ton of stamina, especially if you're out of stamina and you get stunned. This will save your group from a wipe. Trust me. Last one up is Fortified and that's Increased Armor. Green Tree doesn't really affect performance that much, but I'm going to go with Steve's Blessing, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Treasure Hunter. For the attributes, it's pretty obvious here, but I go with all max health. I'm using an orc for this, and that's not the racial choice I'd recommend. The tricky thing with the attributes is make sure your stamina pool is a little bit higher than your max magic. Reason being, when you're getting orbs or you're getting spear shards back, your resource sustain that's going to come from this is going to be based off your max pool. You don't want to get magic back when you use an orb or a synergy like that. You want to get stamina back. Stamina is harder to return than it is magic. It's we can use balance. So in summary, go max health unless you have to get your stamina a little bit higher, like if you're using a Breton or something. Racial choices, I would go with the Imperial. It's going to give reduced cost red diamond, which is extremely strong because it applies to your blocking as well, dodging everything. It's going to increase your max stamina and max health. I'm doing this on Orc and I wouldn't sweat your racial choices too much. It does impact performance, but you can do wild things in Elder Scrolls Online without freaking out about your racial choice. Munda Stone, pretty obvious one. I would go with the Lord for increased max health. You can also go with the Atronach for increased magic recovery and not rely on balance so much for your resource sustain. Consumables, I go with the Bee Witch Sugar Skulls. That's going to be the gold food that gives you max stats across the board. You can go with the purple one for a little bit cheaper option. And Tripods giving you, well, resources across the board. And gang, that's a build. I hope you enjoyed this. The Sorcerer Tank was quite fun and useful, and it played quite a similar to my Dragonite once I got it set up. And me and Hack the Minotaur just crushed it in Dread Cellar, and I can't wait to take this thing out and do a whole bunch of other dungeons. Thanks for watching.